एंड वेलकम टू माई चैनल इन दिस वीडियो वी आर मेनली गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट थ्री थिंग्स फर्स्ट इज द कंसेप्ट ऑफ फोर्स सेकेंड वन दैट इज द टाइप्स ऑफ फोर्स एंड द थर्ड वन दैट इज कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ फोर्स सो लेट स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट वन दैट इज कंसेप्ट ऑफ अ फोर्स सो कंसेप्ट ऑफ द फोर्स इज लाइक फोर्स इज दैट विच अल्टर्स द रेस्ट स्टेट ऑफ अ बॉडी और a uniform motion of a body in a straight line right so in simple terms if i tell you that force is just a push or a pull on a object by another object right so let's take an example that this is the duster right so in this duster if i am applying a pushing force pushing force so i can say that a force exerted by one object on the another object and the alteration in the normal state of this duster can be seen after applying a force so now in this example i have applied a pushing force on the duster right for example if i want to explain you about the pulling force then it will be just leave the duster so gravity because of the gravity so this duster it goes towards the surface of the ground so that is the pulling force on this duster exerted by the gravity whereas in this example a pushing force exerted on this duster by my finger so that is the simple example of a pushing or a pulling on an object by another object right so that was the concept of a force let's start with the types of force so mainly there are two types first is the external force and the second one that is the internal force the basic difference between these two that is external and the internal force is that the source of the force so if the source of force is outside the body it is termed as an external force if the source of force which is inside the body or within the body which is termed as an internal force right so the best example of an external force is gravity gravity under normal circumstances is constantly affecting all the bodies and it is constantly attracting all the bodies towards the center of the earth so that is the best example for the external force if i tell you another example of the external force is that for our treatment purpose we use whirlpool bath so in the whirlpool bath if i want to treat my arm so i keep my arm inside the whirlpool bath and i start the machine so the flow or i can say the movement of the water which is created inside the machine so that alters my normal position of my arm so again remember the definition force is that which alters normal or i can say the resting position of a body right so here the movement of the water which alters the position of my arm inside the whirlpool bath so again i can say that it is a force which is exerted by water on my arm and more precisely it is an external force because the source of force is outside the body right i hope the concept of external force is getting clear to you another example of the external force is therapist performing a passive movement right if we are observing a paralyzed patient and a therapist is going to initiate a passive movement to the paralyzed part right so paralyzed part we can consider as an it is in a rest state so if we apply an external force in the form of an passive movement so that passive movement it is working as an external force and which alters the rest state of a paralyzed part right so there is the another example of the external force but in both of these examples i have mentioned only the facilitation of the movement external force can be the restriction of the movement too so if i give you the example of a player throwing a ball right so that ball if it hits the wall so what happens that wall will stop the motion wall will stop the motion of that force so again i told you earlier in the definition of the force that it can alter the resting state or the uniform motion of an object which is being altered so that is the force so if that wall when the ball hits that particular wall its motion or its moment is restricted 
so external force can be the facilitation of the movement or it can be a restriction of the movement now let's shift to the internal force internal force best example is the muscle contraction so if i contract my biceps right so in the contraction of the biceps it going for the elbow flexion and my forearm wrist and hand complex it is brought nearer to my shoulder so that is the best example of the internal force that is contraction of the muscle but there are another examples too that is the weight bearing joints right so a weight of the upper body or i can say that if i more precisely tell you that let's take an example of a knee joint right so weight of the upper body which is passed through the femur and the force force in the downward direction which is being exerted on the tibial surface on the tibial plateau so which is the example of a force exerted on the bone by another bone and because of the weight bearing joint so forces which are acting and now the origin of the force it is also inside the body and the resulting motion or i can say the resulting condition which is also inside the body so this is the example of the internal force so i hope the concept of the types of forces is clear to you now the last thing that is remaining that is the composition of forces so now let's study the composition of force so till now i have explained you about some of the practical examples as well as the definition and the types of the forces but those examples are routine examples but when it comes to write it on paper then it sometimes it becomes difficult to describe a force right so in order to make it easier there are some of the force vectors or i can say the composition of the forces which makes each and every example very easy to explain right so let's focus on the composition of the forces right so in the composition of forces we must remember three things first is an arrow is drawn to represent a force right the, in this arrow there are main three things so the first one that is this point it is termed as a point of application of force it is the point of application of force next thing is the length of this arrow length of arrow and this arrow head when is showing the direction of the force so again let's quickly revise it in this arrow so first point that is the point of application of force second thing is the length of the arrow and the third one that is the direction of the force so now how can you write in this examples right so as i have give you the example of this duster that i am giving a pushing force on this duster and as we know the definition that it alters the normal state of this duster that is the normal state is this that is the resting condition but if apply a pushing force it alters the normal state right so now how do we come to know that if i am applying a pushing force now you apply the three thing in this example so the first one that is the point of application of force so where is the point of application so i am applying a force at this particular point so this becomes the point of application of force second thing is length of an arrow now the length of an arrow i have write it over here like length but actually it is showing the magnitude right so actually it is showing the magnitude that is how much force is being applied on a object right so that is the magnitude or the length of an arrow and the third one that is the direction of the force so here you can see that in the direction of the force that is away from me or i can say towards my right side so this is the simple application of these three points right so again if i write the example like this that i have an object that is the duster and it is placed over a particular surface so i am applying a force from this particular point now to show this thing i am right drawing the diagram like this 
that this is the point of application point of application of force this is the length of an arrow or the magnitude magnitude and the arrow head is showing the direction of direction of the force so this is how you can make the another examples of the external as well as the internal forces also so now let's take an example of the internal force as we know that brachialis it is the elbow flexor muscle right so if i draw a diagram right, let me first clear this thing this is my arm component here comes the elbow joint and this is the forearm now this is the direction of elbow flexion elbow flexion now we know that brachialis muscle it is the elbow flexor and brachialis is inserted over the proximal part of the forearm so whenever there is muscular contraction which is the internal force muscular contraction is occurring so this becomes the internal force right it brings the re forearm wrist and hand complex in the direction of the elbow flexion right and here this is the point of application of force that is over the forearm the length of an arrow is showing the magnitude and the direction is towards in the elbow flexion direction so this is how we can make another examples of the internal as well as the external forces if you find any other examples do let me know in the comment section till then keep finding the examples do share this video maximum and on next sunday i am also bringing another videos on the force part 2 so do watch that video till now keep sharing the video do like share and subscribe my channel don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you will get the notification each and every time i post a new video thank you so much for watching the video till end